Sam from DigiSearch here, and in this video, I'm going to be running you through some of my favorite Excel formulas. So these are some of the most common ones you'll be using, and they are great to know just because they'll save you so much time and, and screwing around with your data um, or your keywords or whatever you're manipulating in Excel. These are just going to kind of take some of the hassle out of it. And so the first Excel formula I'm going to show you has to be one of the most used ones. One of the ones you're going to be using the most when you're pulling numbers. And that would be the VLOOKUP. A VLOOKUP is going to allow you to have data in one table that doesn't match the data in the other table in terms of sorting or ordering. And you're going to be able to still match up the values for the associated data. So you're going to be able to look for one name from one table in another table and pull the number from that table into your original table. It's a lot easier if I just show you. So here I've got keywords um, and I've got a number next to them. So say you got car hire here 500, you got car hire here car hire Melbourne 300. Now let's say I just had car hire Melbourne here completely separately. Um, and then let's say I had car rental Sydney. Now, just imagine this table being 10,000 rows. Imagine this one just being some random selection of 50. You're not going to go through 10,000 rows 50 times to get this number. But what you can do is just use a VLOOKUP formula. I'll just quickly do one now for you just to be able to show you what it looks like. That one and that one. And straight away, see car high Melbourne, 300. 300. Car rental Sydney, 250. Car rental Sydney, 250. It pulls it straight away. Uh, when you're manipulating, when you're looking at 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 rows, it does take a little bit longer but it's merely seconds or just a couple minutes for this VLOOKUP. So let me show you how to actually do it. So what you're going to do is, like I said, a VLOOKUP formula. So just start typing it into Excel and it will recognize it immediately. So it looks for the value in the leftmost column of a table and then returns the value of the same row from a column you specify. So I'm just going to press tab. And the first thing it's looking for is the lookup value. Now the lookup value is what you're looking for. So what I'm looking for is car high Melbourne. So I want to find car high Melbourne in this table on the left. So I'm just going to click car high Melbourne and comma. And the next is the table array. So this first one was what I'm looking for. This second one is where I'm looking for it. Now it's going to be column A through to column B. So A will have what I'm looking for. But then B is the number I'm going to be wanting. So I need to select A through to B. Now column index number is the column number of the item I actually want to extract. So you've got column 1, you've got column 2. Now the value here that you're looking for always has to be column 1. So you can't start this selection in a column before this it has to be what you're looking for has to be column one and then what I'm actually trying to extract is in column two so I'm just going to put column I'm just going to put number two do a comma you can now do a true or a false selection here so the true meaning it's an approximate match or false meaning exact match we don't want any approximations here. It's it's 99.5% of the time you do a VLOOKUP, you're going to want false. So you can type in false, which is what will happen if I clicked on this. Or, much simpler to type, you just do zero. And that will essentially be a false. I'm going to press enter. And then that's the formula there. So let me do that one more time for you. So I'm going to VLOOKUP. It's going to be what I'm looking for. Car rental Sydney, comma. It's going to be where I'm looking for it. It's in column A and column B. Now it's in the second column is what I want to extract. So number two, one, two. And then it's a 
false here because it's an exact match. So false, enter, and there we go, 250. Now what I could do is I could just do throw car hire here and car hire Sydney. Now, if I drag this formula down, it's going to instantly match them. So car hire, 500, 500. Car hire Sydney, 300, 300. So it's great when you're actually pulling numbers from one table and the ordering, or you don't know if you have all of them in another table. So you'll find yourself using this a lot with search volumes. So downloading a search volume export from the Google Keyword Planner. You're going to get 800 or you're going to get up to 3,000 keywords there with search volumes. And you're going to want to extract that. Easiest way to do it is a VLOOKUP. It means you don't have to manipulate the Google data at all. You just pull it into something you've got set up. Okay, so I'm just going to clear this away. So that was the VLOOKUP. Now, the next one I'm going to show you is how to count the characters in cell. So this is useful when you're looking at the link of say a meta title or a description or anything you want to kind of work out the length of. Super, super simple. It's just equals len, L, oops, L E N. Press tab and it's just text. So you just select your cell, you press enter and you're done. So what you can do is just double click in the bottom right hand corner and that'll auto drag it down the bottom. And you can see there, that it's just counting all the characters in this cell. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it includes everything, it's just the amount of characters in there. Nice and easy. Now sometimes when you export data from various sources, for whatever reason, text or numbers end up with a space on the end of them. There's a massive pain when it happens because you obviously have to go through and clear that out to be able to use the data. So using this LEN formula, I'm going to count the 17 for car rental Sydney again, but I'm just going to throw a space on the end of it. So now it's 18, it's gone from 17 to 18. Now that space could be across say 100,000 rows. You, you don't want to be going through each of them individually and being able to remove that trailing space and you can't just find and replace space out of it because you've got spaces between car and rental and rental in Sydney so it will completely screw up your keywords if you do a find and replace. What you can do however is a trim so it's equals and trim. We just type that one in remove all spaces from a text string except for single spaces between words. So press tab Click the text, press enter. Now it doesn't look like anything's changed, but if I drag this down, it will be 17. Yep, so you see 17. Now the same can happen with spaces beforehand. So let me just copy this one down again. So we got 18, so we got a space on the end. Let's throw a space in front as well. So now we've got a space in front and the end. Let's do another trim formula. And I'll drag this one down again and you can see back to 17. So it's giving this formula here is giving us the ability to cut that space off the front and cut that space off the end of as much data as you want almost instantly. Now the next one is a super simple one that everyone should really know. Um, but I'm going to show it to you anyway, just in case there's people that don't know it. And that would just be the sum. So it's just adding up. So say you want to get the total of adding up all of these, you can just highlight it there and there's the sum there. But obviously you might want it shown in the doc because you're changing things as you go. You just do an equals sum tab and then you select your range. Enter and you've got your sum there. And so then throw a comma on it, get rid of your decimal points, and there you go, 1950. So that's a super simple sum formula. And then moving on from there, we'll go to count. So very similar, um, but 
what you might want to do is know how many numbers you've got here. So what we'll do is we'll do a count formula, select the range, and that will come back with six right there. Now, say you want to include the count of these, this six here. If I was to change the range of this to include both columns, so that means I, I can count how many of these cells have something in them, and press enter, it's still going to be six. Because a count formula won't count cells that are text-based, like this six. It'll only count cells with numbers in them, like this six. But if you change the count formula to a count A formula, so just for this one, just putting the A there, press enter, it'll come back with the 12 I want. Because a count A formula will allow you to count both number-based cells and word-based cells. Now there is one extension to this count formula that I will always use as well. Um, and that will be the count if. So it's one thing just to count the cells here, but then the chances are you want to apply a rule. And that rule would probably be some sort of if. So if something happens, then this kind of thing. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do a count if for you. So just equals again and count, but then you go count if, and that will be count the number of cells within a range that meet a given condition. So just have this. Now the range would be, say, car hire through to car rental Sydney. And then the criteria, let's just say, let's count the cells that equal car hire. Now to equal car hire, it's just car hire within the quote marks, close it off, press enter. Now that's obviously going to come back with one. Same thing if I changed car hire to car hire Sydney. That's also going to come back with just the one. Now there's one little trick to this that you can do. What I could do is remove Sydney, remove that space, and put in a star. Press enter. Coming back with three. So what this is doing is it's it's looking for car hire wild card. So anything that starts with car hire, which is one, two, three. Now I could do the exact same thing with rental. And that'll come back with three as well. Three. And what I could also do is remove car rental, so the wild cards at the front, and throw in Melbourne. Now this is going to count how many cells have Melbourne at the end of it with anything before it. And it should be two, which it is right there. And same with Sydney. If I throw Sydney into there, press enter, that'll come back with two. So you can see that there. So that's a great way to be able to put a condition there. It allows us to put a rule out there to make sure we're only counting what we actually need to be counting. Another quick keyword manipulation one here. So say you get car hire here, you might want to put capital letters for, car, for C in car and H in hire. So what you're going to do is equals, and you're going to do proper. And then just click on the keyword, and now it's going to capitalize the C, and it's going to capitalize the H. And I can drag that down, and it will make some more capitalization changes there. But that might not be the way you want it to go. Another option is upper. That's going to make everything uppercase. Chances are you'll download data from somewhere, and it's got words in uppercase, lowercase, or proper case, and you don't want them in that case, you want them in another case. This is the formula to do it. Because from here, so that's, that would be basically known as lowercase, that's uppercase, I can then do, let's just do proper off the back of that. It's proper case. 
and we can go back to lowercase by just typing lower. Pressing tab, clicking that one, and there we go. So we've essentially done the transformation from this into this to that and back to that. So it just allows you to kind of a, a bit more freedom in how you're presenting the data. Every time I'm using keywords in my raw data, every time I'm using keywords in my dashboard, I tend to prefer lowercase. Just because when you're working with uppercase and lowercase in the same spreadsheets, uh, as soon as you start trying to upload keywords to tools, some tools don't recognize uppercase and lowercase versions as being the same, and they mark them as unique which means you're starting to manipulate duplicate data, which is a real pain in the neck. So I just try and keep everything lowercase where possible within my raw data anyway. Okay, and now the last thing I just want to show you quickly is the if formula. So like I was saying before with the count if, the if formula itself just allows us a bit more freedom in what we're doing and allows us to put rules behind our data. So when you start dashboarding, when you start actually manipulating data, an if formula will allow you more control of what you're doing. So looking at what Excel says the if formula here, it's, it checks whether a condition is met and returns one value of true and another value of false. Let's go equals if A1 equals car hire, and value of false, false. Close it off, press enter. So obviously, A1 equals car hire, true. So if it's true, it's true. If it's false, it's false. So it's true, so that gives us true. However, if I manipulate this to go car hire use, enter, that'll change to false. So if I change the S away and that goes back to true. So this allows you to basically control what you do when certain conditions are met. So what you'll find yourself doing is you'll be nesting if formulas. So you'll have formulas within this if statement that only run when the if statement is met. So only do the formula when say A1 equals car hire. If it doesn't equal car hire, then don't do the formula. So there's a million and one reasons as to why you'd use this, and you'll start getting into it once you actually start creating your dashboards and you start working out what data it is you're playing for. But for now, just know that this is extremely valuable to you, so at least have a play with it, just because it will come in handy without a doubt. Okay, well that concludes uh, this video. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching it and I hope you've gotten something out of these basic Excel formulas here. Please feel free to leave a comment uh, or any feedback you have about the video. I'd love to hear anything you'd have to say. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.